Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Sharla Brown, and on today's show, we are talking with the Elizabeth Fry Society. My guests today are Mary Cazores, who's a coordinator at uh, the Elizabeth Fry Society, and Mary Veltri, who's the president of the Board of Direct Directors. So welcome to the show, ladies. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So can you tell me a little bit about the history of the Elizabeth Fry Society? Well, the Elizabeth Fry Society in Thunder Bay started in 2003. And there were a group of very active women in Thunder Bay who felt the need to assist women who were in prison. And at that time, women were at the district jail and the accommodations were just horrible. Um, sometime after that, there was a facility created for them at the uh, prison or the Thunder Bay Correctional Center on Highway 61. And that was a significant improvement. So we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, we're one of many Elizabeth Fry Societies throughout Canada. And the organization um, itself is named after a woman named Elizabeth Fry, who was a, a leader in England um, of prison reform, of the prison reform movement. And she lived at the turn of the 1800s, so many years ago. Uh, let's see, that's like yeah. 200 years ago. Over 200 yeah, years ago. Yeah, 200 years ago. And she was a, a real uh, firebrand. She did work with women and children who were being put in prison. She used to um, go and read to them. Uh, but primarily she was trying to abolish prison for women and children because it was um, obvious that it was people who were poor who were ending up in jail. So um, yeah, so that's how this organization got its name. Wow, and super interesting because uh, we were chatting before the break about how you know she was doing this long before even women had the right to vote. Exactly. So a true pioneer and trailblazer for, for women and women's rights uh, long before women even were not necessarily heard for being able to, to do things like that and have a movement like that for sure. Wonderful. So tell me a little bit about what the mandate of the organization is. Well, our, our role is to assist women who have been criminalized. And we use this word criminalized to sort of focus on the fact that there are conditions that result in women becoming victim or susceptible, vulnerable uh, to uh, crime and being charged and being put in jail. So our goal is ultimately to abolish prison for women um, and to find more humane and more effective ways at dealing with women who are, um, are finding themselves in the criminal justice system. So we know it's things like uh, addictions, poverty, uh, racism, violence that uh, are factors that contribute to women being criminalized. And what we do in addition to advocate for them is we also provide services for them. So we're doing a lot of work within the prison system itself. Um, we provide services and I think Mary will talk a little bit more about those programs. Um, and we're advocating both at an individual level and at a systemic level. Right, for sure. So let's, let's talk, uh, Mary, about some of those um, programs and services that you offer. We offer an incredible, for um, a relatively small organization, we offer a very large number of programs and services both uh, within and outs uh, outside of the correctional s uh, center, or system rather. So for example, uh, we offer court support and that is assisting women who request us to um, be in court with them and help them through the, the process. Very often, uh, it's also um, acting in a liaison capacity with their respective lawyers um, to ensure that they are getting the information that they require for their next court date. Mm -hmm. So within the Correctional Centre there are a wide wide range of uh, largely volunteer based uh, programs so we literally run, run programs Charlotte from a Monday to through Sunday um, a cycle. So for example on Mondays we have a, a group of volunteers who offer yoga and this is specifically um, yoga for women who are uh, incarcerated. Um, in fact, one of our uh, yoga volunteers was, was recognized with a, um, a grant from the Kripalu uh, Yoga Foundation. Um, and she is uh, assisting the women by giving them some res resources as well. Uh, in, in terms of things that they can do outside of the, uh, the yoga classes. 
So Monday afternoon we offer uh, arts and that is very much hands-on uh, activities of very, a wide range from, you know, from painting and beading. Um, we invite uh, different facilitators from the community to come in and, uh, and do a variety of different art uh, projects uh, with, the, uh, with the women. Mm -hmm. Um, we also, as the week progresses, on Tuesdays we, uh, in partnership with Alpha Court, uh, offer life skills. So um, the women will um, ask for specific um, assistance regarding uh, things that may be useful to them uh, when they're back into the community. So budgeting is, uh, is one. Um, access to counseling services uh, is another one that's very highly uh, regarded. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then, uh, again, as the week uh, as the week progresses, Thursday we have a very unique program. Mary will add add to it. It's a mindfulness and, and meditation, and it's a very strong group of um, of volunteers who come in and uh, and do meditation uh, with uh, with the inmates. And that group's been running for close to three years now, wow. and uh, we have a roster of six meditation facilitators. Uh, many of whom have taken a, a, a specialized course on prison mindfulness. And uh, we rotate once a week. We have two uh, facilitators going out there, uh, teaching the women how to meditate. And um, it's a very useful skill for them to have in prison because the stress that they experience uh, is quite great. And having this very simple tool, just watching your breath, is a, a method for them to deal with some of the anxiety that arises. Absolutely, for sure. Yes. So that's that's Thursdays, um, and I'm going to I'll segue for for a moment to um, let you know that we're working on a very special, very unique um, a project, and that is a mural. So uh, we'll talk about it a little later on. But that uh, we're coming in two days a week, Thursdays and Fridays, um, with a, a art facilitator. So Saturdays, we um, have on occasion brought in um, speakers to talk about specific uh, issues on a public uh, legal information um, session. And then Sundays, we have uh, back by popular demand, a second group of a book club. So mm. we have, um, again, a roster of seven volunteers who rotate to come in and read and and uh, very much like a book club in the community, um, the women uh, are, are are all working on the same um, a book, um, often reading uh, out loud, um, and then there's reflection on you know on the on the topic, and uh, very often we've been able to include films as part of the uh, part of the novel, and the 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 books are either purchased by volunteers of incredible wow. uh, volunteers who do that are often donated by by other book club members in the community. Wow. So it's kind of Monday to, to Sunday in terms of the programming within the Correctional Center. Yes, for sure. And um, I'd like to, I, we're going to have to take a quick break, but um, you met, keep mentioning volunteers over and over again. So I'd love to start the next segment definitely talking about all the wonderful volunteers that you have. We'll be right back and talk more with the Elizabeth Fry Society. <laughs> 